Poverty so are having problems paying their rent and feeding their kids. Oh. I want to start by uh, a story. <laughs> About three months ago, a, na a man named George that we knew very well was found dead in his, in his apartment. And uh, this is a, just a short account of his story. After being in a program in St. Thomas, he was released back to Toronto with no follow up at all. Uh, wound up spending two or three days on the streets. Somehow he managed to. Uh, negotiate a room for rent with a landlord on the basis that he had been just accepted on ODSP and he had the letter. The landlord agreed to let, let him stay there for a couple of months I and mean, a couple of weeks before he got his check. Uh, George went to ODSP office and it was the day that the strike started and nobody would deal with him. So immediately him and the worker went to the welfare office to explain what was going on, what George had done. He was kicked out physically out of that office because they refused him to give a check. Shame. Shame. A week later, George was found dead in his room by the landlord. Now you have to imagine, had George lived, what he faced sitting in that room alone. He was waiting for the landlord to knock on that door, waiting for that paycheck, which he couldn't produce. And he had promised the landlord he could give it to him. He knew that that knock might be the police. And he knew 
that, 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 that the other is a sheriff. And the only other option he had, because there is no housing in the city, was back on the streets. So George is dead now. For the last three months, OCAP. I'm on with silence. There's more. For the last. Someone wants a moment of silence. Let's spend 30 seconds here for, for George. I have more names. For the last three months, OCAP and its allies have been working in Parkdale and poor communities like Dundas and Sherburne to mobilize around these attacks against poor people that have been going on for years. And we go and we've been in drop-ins, we've been in rooming houses, we've been in, in hostels, we've been on the streets, we've been in the parks. And we told her we're going to come tonight and we're going to open up a building so we have a house, we have housing tonight. We, we chose this time because we know that the world is watching. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of youth who are here today in Toronto, who come from poor communities, who struggle in poverty. And we want to talk to them to find out how they fight back. And we want to show them how we fight back. And we want to show them that we're building a movement and resistance here. And we will not accept to suffer in silence. We know that in Quebec City right now, there's a squad that was open several months ago. We know that in Montreal, a year ago, there was a squad that was open and they're going to celebrate that two days from now. We know that in Vancouver there's a resistance. We know that in Ottawa there's a squad. We know that in Guelph, Kingston, Sudbury, Hamilton, all these places, we know that there are movements right now where people are fighting back. Hey folks, there's a number of Keepy locals participating in squad actions this weekend. Um, TAs, Teaching assistants, graduate assistants, contract faculty, secondary school teachers, social service workers, a number of locals across uh, Toronto. Um, and there'll be a great uh, series of events happening on Sunday, including uh, music and poetry, games. QB3903 and all the other uh, lo QB locals that I mentioned are participating in the squad this weekend, not because it's the right thing to do, which it is, and not because there was a recent resolution that was passed at the Ontario Division uh, Convention uh, this spring in support of OCAP, in support of the Ontario Common Front. And uh, like I said, not because it's the right thing to do, but, but because the, the fight for affordable housing, the fight for housing in general, is part of struggles for increased minimum wage, part of struggles for increases to welfare payments, rent controls, to stop deportations, to defend picket lines, to abolish racist immigration laws. All these struggles are linked. All these struggles are linked and are all part of the same struggle. That's why Keepy Locals are participating this weekend. The same forces of capitalist globalization that are advancing the agendas of multinational businesses through the privatization of services, deregulation of labor and environmental laws, increases in the inequality within and between countries, are the same forces which have made legislative changes to allow easy evictions, which have abolished rent controls, which have cut welfare so that a million people have to make a choice between whether they want to eat or pay their rent, which have frozen minimum wages, which have sold off existing public housing. These are the same forces which force 2,000 people to be evicted each month, which force two to four people in a situation where they actually die, where two to four people die a week in Toronto alone. This situation forces 63,000 people onto waiting lists for adequate housing. Uh, there was a banner that was hung outside a squat recently in Quebec City, and it said, the logic of profit is encouraging slums. And I think that really aptly describes the situation. We have an economic system in place. If there's money in building condos instead of affordable housing, you can be damn sure the homeless will stay on the streets. 
You can be damn sure that laws will be put into place to arrest them, and you can be bloody well sure that folks who pass for police will be armed to serve and protect the wealthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The inequality and fear and poverty that has created this situation must be fought at every level by all of us here and now, not in some afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> so the, I, I believe that the labor movement need, needs to fight back, continue the fight back, step up the fight back. We need to facilitate structures within our unions which democratize our unions. Because make no mistake, many of our unions are not that democratic yet. That facilitate the ongoing and active particip participation by all members at all times. We cannot afford to be passive in the face of capital, uh, capitalist globalization and its agenda. We must revitalize the militancy and the spirit of solidarity that we've, that we've seen and that we've been a part of, that we've experienced. Yeah. Um, we have to uh, broaden our networks of resistance and utilize our power of so social mobilization to its fullest. We have to break through the inertia starting at noon until the... Hey everybody, I'm, I'm Dan Sawyer from uh, Anti-Capitalist Community Action in Ottawa. Just one of the groups that was sort of the, uh, one of the coordinating groups, uh, one of the organizing groups for the Seven Year Squad in Ottawa. For those of you that don't know, the Seven Year Squad was an amazingly successful project for the seven days that it lasted. It happened during the Take the Capital campaign a couple weeks ago in Ottawa. We took over a building in downtown Ottawa and we held it for seven days. We had, and we had amazing support from like the, the full spectrum of resistance in Ottawa, from mainstream anti-poverty groups, to union activists, to anti-capitalists, to punks, to homeless people, to people living in poverty, they all came together for this project. And it came together, it came together so well and, and, and was so successful because people in Ottawa are currently living through the worst housing crisis in Canada right now per capita. 15,000 families are living are, are waiting up to seven years, or sorry, 15,000 families are waiting a minimum of seven years for social housing in Ottawa. That's 15,000 families, not 15,000 individuals. There's another 25,000 families that each year start the application process to get into social housing and realize that the waiting list is so long and back out. That's 25,000 families each year applying and backing out of that process because the wait is a minimum of seven years. So people in Ottawa are tired of waiting. We're tired of waiting for social workers and MPs and MPPs and bureaucrats to do their job and help people out. We're tired of waiting, so we took over a building. We took over a building because there's a housing crisis. Yeah. And the links that were built out of that, we only lasted seven days, and I hope the one today lasts a lot longer. I hope that, yeah. It, it was this, it was this, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the seven year squad, I mean, we should have, we should, you know, in, in hindsight, we should have known seventh day, it was likely we were going to get shut down, you know, but, but anyway, so yeah, we built, we built these amazing links, we built these amazing links between groups that are still going strong. And across, across Canada right now, across this part of the Northeast, there's a huge movement to confront, to confront capitalism and imperialism at the local level and really make our resistance to these global systems of death and oppression as local as possible, confronting them in really meaningful ways. Confronting them in ways that, have, that help people and affect people in their daily lives and make things better for us at, you know, at the street level in our daily lives. And that's what projects like this are about. So from Anti-Capitalist Community Action and the other groups that were involved in the Seven Year Squad, we say solidarity, kick some ass, I hope it goes really well, we're here with you. Check. McAlley! Thank you. Hi, uh, our next speaker is uh, Sean uh, Brandt from OCAP uh, and Paul Mohawk Nation. Uh, 
are standing on uh, Mississauga land. We're standing on uh, Mohawk land. Let's pay homage to those people. But I, I can tell you one thing about this place is, is that it, it has more significance than, than being ancestral lands of one nation or another. In this place a year ago, a brother of mine, in fact a brother of ours, used to make this park his home. And Gaytan talked about people that have lived and died in the streets, but this one fella sort of struck my heart. And when I walked to the OCAP office, he'd be laying here in the park and, and people knew him and he had a little dog. But how he ended up in the streets was he worked his whole life. He worked his whole life and his wife got sick with cancer and he moved from his reserve up north and he came to Toronto and he spent his savings and he sold his house and he gave her the care and he stood by her until she died. And when she died he had nothing. And he lived in this park because that's where we put people who have nothing. And a year ago he, he died. Free public health care always. Yeah, right. It's not enough to talk about homelessness as some numbers or, or uh, statistics. Homelessness is about people and it's putting a face on people. It's about understanding how people got to the situation that they're at and how a society can let people go when they're no longer valued to die in the streets. Homelessness isn't, isn't a cause. And it's not about buying a toque every year. Homelessness is not a cause. Homelessness is a consequence. And it's a punishment. It's a, it's a punishment for people who become unemployed, for workers who get hurt on the job, who don't qualify for workers' comp. It's about a brother in Hamilton who didn't qualify for EI and hung himself before he was forced onto the streets. We have to acknowledge very basically what homelessness is and how people, how all of us can be subject to, to that punishment. When Gaytan talked about the people that we remember, it has to be clear on the other hand for someone like Lastman, Fantino, Eves, Kretchen, while we remember those people who die in the street, we will not forget which governments brought those policies that caused those people to die in the streets of this and every other city in this country. <laughs> living on a reserve, born, raised, and, and living on a reserve, I used to think that the greatest indignity that people could face was a, a mother having to, to cut her, her child down from a tree who, who, who hung herself, or a mother who hung herself because she couldn't feed her babies, or, or an agency like Canada Feed the Children putting out a call because our, our kids are starving to death in Northern Reserves. I used to think that, that the greatest indignity was having police 60 OPP and 180 MNR circulating pictures of our dead women on the internet with racial jokes. I, I used to think that, that the indignity of picking up our women or adding another nine names to the 53 in Vancouver. Our women, our children. But when you see that indignity and you compare it with with the last breath that someone takes as they're laying on a street knowing that they're going to die. And you think about that sadness and that loneliness. That's what we don't forget. When the Pope was coming to Toronto, Mel Lastman said, Jesus, we got to clean up this street. We got to get these people off the street. We don't want to subject the Pope to the burden of having to see people laying in the street. This is something that has to be embraced by people. OCAP, 
taking a building. It's not a symbolic action. Maybe in the, the presence of the Pope we can, we can seek some uh, comfort and maybe these, these cops here won't bash our heads in tonight. But we don't want his pity. And he can't build our houses. It was described when he got off the plane that the Pope was a frail body led by a powerful soul. And maybe perhaps when these people here that we're surrounded by, moving uh, people off of park benches, moving them off the streets, moving them along all the time, you can look at homeless people and you can say that their frail, dead bodies are just being led around by their will to live another day and to hope that things might get better. People, it's not about grieving. It's not about sadness or pity. This is about taking actions, responsible actions collectively that will allow us, afford us an opportunity to open up a shelter, to provide that shelter to people who need it, to provide that space, to provide that comfort, that, that companionship, that understanding for five days or for 50 days or for 50 years. In the shadow of the Pope, it may be the opportunity that we have, if that's taking advantage of his visit as a First Nations person, I can tell you, he owes it to us. Now we're ready to, to move out. We're gonna go down this street in solidarity. We're gonna go with pride.